Come on. Thank you, Jesus, for tonight. We pray you would minister tonight in only the way you can. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Will you be seated right where you're at? You may not be seated long. As you can tell, my voice is a little dangerous. <laughs> it was a night just like this that I've seen great shifts in people's lives. Pastors asking you to sit on the edge of your seat, on the edge of your spirit because of that. Because tonight is a night for you. Tonight is a shift for you. There are certain words that unlock certain things inside of us. I, was, I remember last time my voice was like this. I sat on the front row of Hillsong Church in Sydney, Australia, and I had no voice. Came out of nowhere and robbed me of that night, and I was sitting on the front row saying, God, do you want me to preach or not? Because if you do, you're going to have to heal my voice. Had no voice before I started, but by the time I got up there, I had something to give. There was a girl in the crowd that night who started praying for her family. There was the call to pray for our family that God wants to use tonight to shift our families. I didn't know what happened that night until this last week. That girl from that night emailed me. She was 15 in that service. Her family was broken and split apart and needed wholeness. She began to pray for herself. She got saved that night. And then she began to pray for others. I had a little prayer book that I kept at my back table and I said, hey, I'd, people would always come up and ask me for my autograph and I felt kind of weird giving people my autograph as I'm a pastor. And it's really not about me, it's about him. But then I also felt bad not doing it because here's this teenager that just wants to share their love. So I would always say, hey, if you're gonna get my autograph, I need yours because you're no different than me. You're just as much as a world changer as I am. So. And so I put a thing at my back table. Okay, go sign my autograph book. And while you're back there, put a couple prayers in there. And then we would take that prayer book home and my staff and my team, we'd pray over those names. We didn't, half the time didn't have names, but we'd just pray over those requests. And uh, we didn't know from all over the world. And I guess she had put a request in there uh, that God would restore her family and that God would empower her sisters to great things one of her sisters had a dream of doing music for the Lord and so she just said God I just pray over my sister she doesn't even know you yet but I pray you would reach her and through me being saved and then she would do music for you she said well now I work at Hillsong Church in Australia I'm a part of the I, I run all the choirs this this 16 year old she said and my sister she's a part of a really small band called Hillsong United and she sings uh, this song called Oceans. She said, I don't know if you've heard of her, but God answered your prayers. You never know what God is up to in a service like tonight. I thought, wow, God, that's pretty awesome. I was praying for a song to be birthed out of a singer that I had never met, a song that would touch me but yet I was praying for her. How crazy is God? I remember a, a night at our conference, we used to have a conference called Ammunition. And uh, we, when I was a young youth pastor, I would name everything negative and radical. You know, I mean, not everybody can get around ammunition. People are like, that's scary, you know? I would say God's, God's, you know, God's word is our ammunition. Your voice is a weapon. And it was powerful. But as we stepped out to plant our church, God told me, I want you to keep the radical, but name it positive. That's why our church is called Fearless. Uh, because anybody can get would be a fearless. Amen? Amen. But when we had our conference, we would have youth come from all over. Our conference started as a camp in a uh, music festival. We took our youth group to a music festival and 
uh, it was a Christian music festival. There, there's, uh, you know, it's real exciting to be there, but it's real nominal Christianity. You know, it's, you don't have to be very saved to go to a Christian music festival. In fact, you don't have to be saved at all. You, you, didn't, you can just be how you are. And people were there from all different denominations and stuff. And so we put our little Pentecostal radical camp in the middle of this uh, you know, regular, every denomination, every group under the sun music festival. And that, that balance was radical. Many times they would tell us to turn it down, turn down the sound because they couldn't hear their concerts over what God was doing in the youth, in our, in our tent. God was doing radical things. We ended up moving that uh, conference after about 700 people were coming to our church. The first year we added our church, it grew to 1,500. Uh, the last year we did it, at our church, there were over 4,000 people packed into a 2,000-seat auditorium. We had Reinhard Bonnke preach. If you never don't know who Reinhard Bonnke is, you, you should look him up. He's a pretty amazing general of God. And uh, it's, he, he does things. At, at his events, uh, they have to take cars to get to the altar call. Just to put it that way, that's how many people are there uh, at his event. A couple million will come to the events. Um, he's seen a couple million souls saved through his lifetime. And so our conference was like a home group meeting to him. Or, um, but God showed up in power. There was this one young man named Brian that was there. And he got so wrecked after Pastor Ron Hark's message that about four hours later, we were still, he was still on the ground. He was so messed up from the service. We just left him in there. The cleaners cleaned around him. And uh, later about one in the morning, he finally got up off the ground and I was waiting for him. I was hoping he'd get up sooner because I was tired. Amen. Praise God. And I uh, got up at one. And so I wanted to hear what God did. So I said, Brian, what, what happened under there? What, what's going on, man? And he said, pastor, I, he said, I, I think it'll take me a while to tell you, but can we go to lunch next week? And so we went to lunch the next week and he sat down with me. He said, pastor, now, now, he was 16 years old. He said, Pastor, I've I seen stuff on the floor that, that I don't even fully understand it all. But I, one thing I do want to tell you is that I've seen my whole high school campus lifting their hands and worshiping Jesus. And he said, then, Pastor, it didn't end there. It was like this fire that spread to the other campuses in my city. I don't even know how I got to go to them. But I was also standing on four other high school campuses in my area preaching the gospel and people were lifting their hands tears in their eyes he said buddhists were changing muslims were giving up what they believed in and they were serving jesus and i said bro that's awesome i said what are you going to do about that he said i'm going to go back to my school and start a bible club so i said great man so first year i i called him after the year had done i said how'd your bible club go and he said uh it was great um you know i i was the only one that attended <laughs> He said, but I preached to myself and I got a good word. I got a couple of amens in and I said, awesome, man. So what are you going to do now? He said, he said I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to plan up for next year. I'm, I'm going to do it again and see what God does. And so the next year he went back to his school and I called him about halfway through. I said, how's it going, man? He said, I've doubled the Bible club. I said, what do you mean? He said, my sister's coming now. He said, it was a hard deal, but I talked her into it by talking to mom and dad. And I said, that's awesome, man. Next year, I called him. I said, how's it going, man? He said, well, at the first part of the year, we, we tripled it. I, I, my sister invited two friends, and we were growing in extreme numbers, and I was giving the word, and then my sister got offended at me because I didn't help her with something at home, and she divided the church. And, uh, and so I'm back to just me and a couple people at the Bible club table, and I said, awesome, man. So, so what are you going to do? He said, I don't know. I graduate this year, so I don't know what God's doing, but he showed me a vision of my whole campus worshiping. And, you know, pastor, is God messing with me? I said, God doesn't mess with anybody. I said, he gave you that vision to mess you up. I said, so what are you going to do about it? He said, you know what, pastor, I'm going to do? I'm going to come back after, after high school. I'm going to come back. I'm going to go to college locally. I'm not going away because I want to see this vision happen. So he said, you know, I'm going I'm to get a pass. I'm going to come back as a visitor, and I'm going to keep this Bible club going. So I said, awesome, man. The next year I hadn't called him, and the next year went by, and then he called me. He said, pastor, I... I want you to come preach at my Bible club. So I thought, all right, well, got my message ready for three people at a lunch table in the middle of school. And, and we went and sat at that lunch table. We had a sister and his friend and her friend there. And I began to open my Bible and they say, oh, pastor, we're, we're not doing it out here. Uh, we're doing it in the gym. 
I said, in the gym? I thought it was just you guys. She goes, oh no, we just wanted to meet you before we go into the gym. They're all in there. So I walk into the gym and I walk out and the whole gym is packed. I went out like this and then I just went right back to the back and I, and I grabbed Brian and said, dude, what's, what happened? You didn't even tell me. Like, he said, well, you didn't call. <laughs> I said, okay, fair enough. He said, I'll tell you after, just go preach. They need to get saved. So I went out and preached and God touched people. And then I came back. I couldn't wait to hear the story. He said, Pastor, you never, never guessed. This is the second year in after coming. I'm, I'm, a, I'm a college <laughs> sophomore. He said, I was coming back to a high school, believing for this vision. He said, the second year I came back, this, this kid rolled by one of the seniors in high school. He had gotten a car accident and he lost the mobility in his legs. And he was the quarterback of, of the school. He had all these scholarships through three different schools. And he was bitter. He was angry. And so they would roll him around at lunch with his letterman's jacket on. He came by my table with me and my three friends. And he started just mocking me. As he, as he rolled by, he started mocking me for coming back to school. And what are you doing here? And uh, this, that, and this. And his, as he was rolling away, I just stood up. And I said these words. And I don't know where they came from. He said, I, I stood up and I said, do you want to be healed? He said, it's kind of like that moment where you're trying to get back what you just said. It's like, how do those words? <laughs> and he said, as I was saying it, the, the guy turned around real fast and he said, of course I want to be healed. He said, I didn't know what to do at that point. So I just did what I've seen others do. I just walked over to him and put my hand on his leg. And he said, as I was begin praying, closing my eyes, I, I just began to hear him yelling, hey, hey. And I said, whoa, hey, what's going on? He said, your hand is on fire. And he said, it's working. <laughs> he said, pastor, I've grabbed the, both of his legs with my hand and I started speaking in tongues. I started crying out to God. As I started crying out, he said, something took me over. I just picked him up. He said, as I picked him up, I realized that he was a lot heavier than I thought. And when I went to walk, he said, Pastor, I'm kind of clumsy. I tripped over my shoe. He said, and I threw the guy. He was flying through the air. And I'm thinking in slow motion, this is not good. He said, but the craziest thing happened, Pastor. He landed on his right foot. Then his left. It was like the motion was pushing him forward. And with each time he left, he looked back at me and he was not saying Christian words. He said, what the, did you do, what the, and he said he was cussing all, with every step. <laughs> he said, pastor, this couldn't have been done in a church. This had to be done in the high schools. He said, but the whole school thought I was in a fight with the handicapped kid. So they heard us cussing, not me, but him. I was speaking in tongues. They thought I was cussing, but I, <laughs> he said, so the whole school gathered. He said, what did you do to me? He said, this was the moment of my dream. He said, I stood up on the table and I said, I didn't do anything to you. His name is Jesus and he just healed your body. And I've been waiting a long time to see this moment. And I'm not going to miss it. He said, then I turned to the crowd. And he said, all of them lifted their hands for salvation. The cheerleaders, the misfits, the outcasts, the rest of his football team. He said, pastor, every week we've been multiplying. He said, they actually asked us to stop feeding people pizza because we've been messing up the lunch situation. He said, four other schools asked us to come next year. Can I tell you, this kid named Brian just wrote a book this year called The Jesus Club. He's in over 70 campuses in this nation and believing that he will have a Jesus Club on every campus in the nation. Come on, somebody give Jesus a shout of praise. You never know. What could happen when we gather and the Holy Spirit shows up? He 
it might hit you by surprise tonight and mess you up on a whole new path. I hope you're ready. Because God doesn't make any mistakes. If you're here tonight, you didn't choose to be here. God chose you to be the church of power. Come on, do we have the church of power in the room? Come on, anybody let, ready to let the Holy Ghost out on your workplace? Oh, if you're going to celebrate, we might as well party. Come on, why don't you stand up to your feet and give God a crazy shout. Come on, Fresh Start Church. Come on, this is the May conference. Come on, what's his name? Jesus. Come on, what's his name? Jesus. Oh, bowing just took place on three realms. The Bible says in Philippians, whenever the name Jesus is mentioned, it's the name above every name that at the name of the bowing takes place in heaven, on earth. and under earth and confessing starts happening in heaven on earth and under the earth you just made the devil come to the middle of hell and confess that jesus christ is the son when you say the name oh you ought to say it with some power for every time the enemy's for every time he's messed with your family for every time he's given you it jesus jesus Jesus. Jesus, 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 Jesus. Come on, sickness is being healed right now. Jesus, come on, poverty's being broken right now. Jesus, come on. Infirmity, you must leave now in the name of fear, you must leave now in the name of doubt, be gone in the name of. you better run because we got Jesus in the camp we got Jesus in the building you are dethroned now in the name of Jesus we do not worship a safe God we worship a radical God he is full of power he is full of life Jesus 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 oh yeah 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 Come on, slap five people, high five, and say, I'm part of the church of power. I'm a part of the church of power. I'm a part of the church of power. Come on, shake someone next to you and say, I got the power. 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 I, got the power. I, I, learned, I learned that I have the power in my youth ministry because we had mosh pit worship <laughs> we had a whole group of radical students that that came from the world they got saved in the world they loved hard music and they loved to dance to their music so we just worship like that when they worship you better give them some room man someone would do crazy moves i'm like you go ahead and do your thing I, i'll just clap or jump but you do your thing and in a mosh pit, the closer you are to people, the more dangerous it becomes. And the less you have to move to affect them. Some of you don't realize why God has brought some really messed up people close to you. All you have to do is barely move. When you're in the crowd, when you move, they move just like that. That's how it works. You have the power to shift your crowd. You're not weak and defeated. You're champions. You're a part of the church. Not the church you've thought it's become. The church he left. Not the bride of Frankenstein, the bride of Christ. Come on, you're the church. I wanna, I wanna, I wanna just break into this. Acts chapter one, verse eight says this, and you will receive Whenever you see a white highlighted word, I want you just to say it like it's like the word is in definition. And you will receive power. Come on, you can do better. And you will receive power. 
Come on, all my ladies. I just want my ladies. And you will receive. Power. All my men. Come on, and you will receive. Power. Come on, everybody together. Come on, and you will receive. Power. When the Holy Spirit comes upon you. <laughs> and you will be my. You will be my witnesses in Jerusalem. And in all Judea and Samaria. And in all Phoenix. And to the ends of the earth it's funny how people think that the power just kind of got turned off and we haven't yet seen the end of the earth they must not have read their bible matthew chapter 3 verse 11 john said it this way uh, to the church of power i baptize you with water for repentance but but one comes after me who is more powerful. oh come on who is more powerful. than i i like that whose sandals I'm not even worthy to carry. He will baptize you with the Holy Spirit and with, what's that last word? Fire. Come on, he will baptize you with fire. I, I asked God, I said, God, why are you gonna, why are you gonna baptize us in fire? Look at this, said, Jesus said this in Luke chapter 24, verse 40, 49. I'm gonna send you what my father has promised, but stay in the city till you have been Whoa. with Power. from on high. I said, God, why are you going to give us fire clothing? Those are cool clothes. I, I, you know, cheetah would have been good or leopard. Or, why, why fire? And God said, well, every time you step into my presence, the enemy tries to remind you of your past. Because he's jealous of you coming into my presence because I booted it, him out. You took his place. You are the worshipers. He used to be the worship leader in heaven. You're the worship leaders in heaven. Because it is in our praises that God is enthroned. The word enthroned means that a king gets a new kingdom. He gets put in position on his throne. It's the, it's the whole process when a new king comes into town. When we praise God, we are removing whatever we've enthroned. Right? We're all worshiping all the time. Whatever we worship is enthroned. When we start worshiping God, we dethrone some stuff and we enthrone god satan is jealous of your worship i said god why, why do you clothe us in fire he said because every time you come into my presence to take the position that he lost he gets jealous and he tries to remind you of your past so you'll leave my presence he said so if he's going to keep reminding you of your past i'm going to clothe you with something to come into my presence to remind him of his future How dangerous is that? You walk into your workplace and the devil's like, I'm going to mess with him. And you're like, oh no, do you see what I'm wearing? You're going to remind me of that? Let me remind you of where you're going. I don't even have to say anything. I just have to show up with my clothing on. Come on, we got to get some fire clothing in this room. It's the new priest garment. Yeah, 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 I like this clothes. You'll be clothed with power from on high. But that word to be clothed does not mean to put on clothing. It means to sink into clothing. It's different. You're not going to put on the Holy Spirit. He's going to put on you. <laughs> he said, you're going to sink into this thing. It's more like a picture of, of an animal hiding inside of a rock. He, he said, you don't have to try to put this on. I need you to try to sink in. I need, I need you to, the thing's not going to fit to you. You're going to fit to it. The, the, gone are the days of Christianity where we're going to try to make the word fit into our lifestyle. We're going to fit our lifestyle into his word. This is where the power comes. When we start saying, God, I, I'm going to tweak what I got to tweak and work what I got to work because I don't want you to have to move because in the power is that you don't move. The power is in the rock. The rock only is powerful because it doesn't move. The enemy, now when I crawl into this, is now not subject to me. It's subject to what I hide in. Okay, we'll go further. John chapter 14, verse number 12. It says, very truly I tell you, whoever believes in me will do the works I have been doing. Now, this is really dangerous because this is Jesus talking. And then he says, and that's not it, they will do even greater things. So, so all of us that have gotten the excuse house, like, 
what would Jesus do? Now you're going to say, what would Jesus do? But what would the last day church do? Because God said, no, no, we're going to take it further. This is from glory to glory. And then he said, not just because you're great. I mean, that will blow your mind. Some of the things that Jesus did, he raised the dead. He healed the sick. He cast out lepers. He ate with sinners. Oh, that gets dangerous for some of us. He loved on the broken. He stood up to the religious. He discipled. We're going to do even greater things, but not because we're so great. Because he says this last word, because I am going to the Father. And then he continues to say, and I will ask what you ask of me. He's saying this, watch. When you move, I'll move. Just like that. And then I'll move from the Father back to you. Just like that. He said, you're going to do greater things, not because you're so great, but because we're going to be in a partnership. I'm going to work with you. You don't have to do this alone. Yeah, you don't have to just work up miracles. No, I'm the miracle worker. I'm going to live inside you. And, and you come to me and you let me know what's going on. And then I'll, let the fa- I'll go to the Father on your behalf. And then I'll come back to shift heaven and earth. In fact, Peter, I want to give you the keys. And whatever you loose on earth, I'll loose in heaven. And whatever you bind on earth, I'll bind in heaven. Whenever you move, I'll move just like there come on holy spirit bring that funky track back whenever i move you move just like that say it with me whenever i move you move how it's that easy we're in a partnership how do we be the church of power we don't got to work it up we just move with him Whenever I move, you move just like that. And whenever you move, I'll move just like that. I'm working with Jesus. I get to work with Jesus, not just in church. I'm the church of power. Church is not in a location. Well, it is, but depending on what day, which person might be at Starbucks on Monday might be in a high school it's dangerous when you start realizing who you are you are the church of power you are the supernatural church you see god's church is a supernatural church it's the super meeting the natural when i move you move look i'm not super i'm just natural If you're natural in this room, raise your hand. Come on, let me see you. You are the best person to walk out the supernatural. God needs natural to put his super on. We are the supernatural church. When I move, you move just like that. The Bible is a supernatural book. It's funny how we've gotten so natural. (laughs) Salvation, supernatural. Healing, yep, that, that's supernatural. Deliverance from sins, supernatural. Mary and the virgin birth, supernatural. Lazarus raising from the dead, supernatural. Jesus confronting demons and them leading in legions, supernatural. Dead people getting up named Lazarus, supernatural. Buried for three days, rolled away the stone, has the keys to death, hell, and the grave. Supernatural. Seas splitting. Supernatural. Shepherds killing giants. Supernatural. Shouts bringing walls down. So why have we become so natural? The instructions or that there is no other option but to be supernatural. The church that Jesus left was a Holy Ghost church. It was where the Holy Ghost was a driver and they were passengers. I'm ready to be a passenger again. I don't need a steering wheel. I don't need to be a backseat driver. Holy Spirit, you blow this thing where you wanna blow this thing. You lead this church where you wanna lead this church. 
You see, Pastor, I was sitting in my church and God, God showed me, Jeremy, you're just working. I was working so hard I got sick. I had to take 40 days off because I was working. And I, I'm not against work because if we want to see discipleship, we got to get a job in the kingdom. And I was working, but I forgot that I'm not working alone. And I was rowing and I had a whole team rowing. And God said, you will never get there with what you're doing. It's too far. There are too many storms. Human power will not get you there. He said, but I gave you something in the ship. You have these sails. That if you would just lift them up, even the storms would push you forward. You see, church, if we would just lift up our sails, the Holy Spirit could take us places that our human power could never get us. You see, God's church is a church of power. Deutimus power, dynamite power. The word power that is pushed all through the word is the word deutimus, which means explosive force. Like dynamite that blows up walls. Explosive force against sickness. Explosive force against apathy. Explosive force against poverty. Explosive force against divorce. Explosive force. It also represents metamorphosis, like a caterpillar transforming into a butterfly. Ah. You never look at a butterfly and call it a caterpillar again. It has transformed so far that it has given a new environment to fly in. It used to live in the mud, love the mud, enjoy the mud, eat in the mud, be friends with friends in the mud. But the moment it was cocooned, it was given a new ability to fly over where it used to live in. And although it may land in the mud every once in a while, it goes, this ain't my home. I'm believing that that power would hit us tonight. That the timid would become bold. That the weak would become strong. That the quiet would become vocal. God is not excited about our preaching. He's not cheering right now because I'm up here speaking. God's not enthused by our lights or our CDs we make. God, God is not, not excited about our videos or our conferences or our new programs or our new t-shirt. God is not excited about our merch tables. He's not excited about our coffee bar or our small donuts we give out to the visitors. God is excited about his power being released on this earth. God is looking for a supernatural church. He's looking for the second wind to blow in the church again. Somebody shout out, I got the power. 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 A church that is not supernatural is not natural to God. Hmm. He's tired of our churches being funeral homes for the walking dead. He's ready for the bride to rise up. And this is a bride like Wonder Woman. She's a warrior bride. Come on, he's looking for the warrior bride to rise up in full power and strength and look like the first church again. Come on, do I have a witness out there today? Come on, let the devil know. I have the power I have the power I have the power when I move he moves just like that are you ready to get wild look I started taking uber rides to church now because they have to sit and hear the gospel they want to get rated well so they listen I do Uber pull now so I can get some extra friends in the car. It's simple. You just break into people's lives. Be normal. Don't tell them your degrees and your position in the church. Don't even let them know you're a Christian yet. Just break in their life. Surprise them. Get some surprise attacks on them. 
I've been having Uber drivers get saved on my way to church. God spoke to me and said, you keep doing altar calls and getting people saved. I want you to do it on the street. I want you to start winning souls on the street. You know, the greatest way you can win a soul is just ask them if you can pray for them. The only people I've ever had tell me no are Christians. <laughs> they tell me all their degrees and they're, they're the deacon at so-and-so church and they don't need any prayer now. I said, well, God bless you. Can you pray for me then? Every time people are like, yes, my, I'm going through a divorce. Yes, my, my family's falling apart. Yes, my uncle has cancer. Right there in the restaurant, right there wherever. Don't have to be weird. Just grab their hand and say, okay, Jesus, I pray right now. You never know what's going to happen probably till you get to heaven. But thank God you were a witness outside of this building. It's simple. Don't make it complicated. Just start stepping out. When the Holy Spirit says do this, just do it. No matter how weird or how strange it may sound, he might try to get you out of your head. So why is the church so natural? Well, I believe Satan saw what God was doing because the first church was exploding. I mean, 3,000, 7,000, 15,000. They said daily. I pray that daily we could, we could be winning souls. Daily, there were people added to the church. Even in persecution, it grew even stronger and faster. But what happened? I believe Satan looked and saw that God had given them a special power to operate in the supernatural. He said, I like that. That's working really good. So I'm going to take that for my own. See, this world still thinks that the supernatural is the enemies. I could picture him. Can, can I be the devil for a second? Is that okay? Come here, come here, come here. Come here, come here. Come here, get up here, get up here, get up here. Get up here as fast as you can. Come here, come here. Come here, I, I, look, come here. Come here, get close. This is not going to work for long the church has been exploding on every corridor we, we you've you just got kicked out last week did you see the demon of alcoholism he just got he's 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 messed up we, we got to get back out there this jesus thing is exploding the the, the followers of the way they, they are they are walking they're like him they look like him they talk like him they, they here's what we're gonna do I, all right go 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 as fast as you can go 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 I, I know what we'll do we'll we'll do this because if as long as they stay in their buildings as long as they as they stay in their pews as long as they as long as we can get them to believe that the church is a building uh, then we'll be okay because every time they break out into the streets it's when people start getting saved it's every time they sing not oh it's okay uh, look it's okay don't 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 please uh, just read these signs it says caution caution if you step out of this because it, you really don't know what's going to happen out here i mean you can, can kind of control this environment people aren't going to judge you they're all doing the same thing if you if you step out of these lines then really this uh, let me let me explain it this way this is my territory this this phoenix like you know you know the college campus i, I got all kinds of things going on here uh you know business that's my realm uh don't 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 believe the things you read in the bible of about like business people getting saved and don't don't read the, the healings uh, here's what i'll do i'll send a few preachers to talk to you guys because you guys look like you're not believing me uh, about that maybe god's power is not for today that it's just for the bible we'll just we'll just we'll give you some theological things you can back that up with and we'll use the word, please don't step out. You look kind of, kind of ed, like you're thinking about it. I want you to stay there because the supernatural is mine. I own it. I invented it. <laughs> it's me, the devil. I invent a lot of things. Like, don't worry about it. I just, I invent a lot of things. I created a lot of things. Uh, you know, God creates it first. Then I manipulate and twist it and orchestrate it and call it mine. I kind of, I, I don't, I don't really follow the copyright laws, but, but I, I might make a lot of things. I've made the supernatural. It's not really for you. You're just to be a good, nice little Christian. Sing come kumbaya around your campfire. Uh, oceans is fine. If you want to sing that, that's fine. Just don't step out of this because then you're going to have to deal with me. And, and I need some helpers up here. Can I get my helpers that I invited up here? Because it doesn't really end there, church. 
Because as long as, as long as, helpers, I'll let you out for a second. You could come out for just a second if you're my helpers. And I need you to come up here because as long as, As I got you there, I might as well tie up a few more things. I'm, I'm okay because I keep seeing some stuff kind of escaping every once in a while, um, like you're giving. I don't want that escaping. I, look, here's the deal. I brought something called a pain in the world. Uh, it's really scary. You, you, you're not going to like it. Um, and so in order to escape pain, I'm going to help you out. What you got to do is control things. As long as you can control your giving, then you won't have to walk through the pain of if someone misuses it. So, so I just want you to control this and keep it in this and just caution. Do not let these things out because if they get out, then, then really that's not, it's not really for you to do. You know, it doesn't take all that. Uh, look, honoring people, just only honor people that honor you. You know, all this stuff about the Bible, about forgiving even your enemies. I mean, who really does that anyways? Huh? So just control that so you won't get hurt serving. You served in your last church and you got hurt in your last church. And, and so really you need a break. You need a sabbatical from serving the Lord because you need to be refreshed. And, and God doesn't want you to serve not refreshed. I know there's a scripture in the Bible that says he who refreshes others will himself be refreshed. I don't think that's true. It's probably not true. Uh, so, you know, those that wait upon the Lord, it's like a waiter waiting upon the Lord. But I don't think that's true either. You probably should just hide in your house and kind of take up a seat for a little while and obedience to God. I mean, yeah, look, look, I mean, you choose which things you want to be obedient to. And then whatever things don't work for you, then you can kind of put those on the side, in the back burn, submitting to authority only if you agree with them, right? As soon as you don't agree with them, here's what I challenge you to do. Go find a new one that will help you get a, a new plan that doesn't know anything about what this one. And then what you do is you put them against each other. And then you, you can just kind of be the God of your own kingdom. It would be awesome. It's kind of like me. Witnessing. Oh, that, that's just for the, that's for the pastors. You pay them for that. Your tithe goes to them witnessing. So you don't need to do that. And, and praise and worship. Dude, I mean, this is not your style. This is like, they're doing like rock. And you, you want like trap. And, and it's not going to work out. And so, and so... It's, it's kind of like just dance at the concerts but don't dance here I mean you, you don't need to dance in church dancing is not for here I mean I know David danced and, and it, but that story's kind of old I mean you're, you're new school faith and trust yeah you know Oh, you know, that kind of goes with the giving. So here's what I want, I want you to do giving make sure you don't give to the church unless you know where it's going unless you can control it So how are we going to change this? Yeah. You see, I, I, I'm believing that a few people are going to let the devil know tonight, I'm not living in your chains anymore. You, you think this little bit of caution tape is going to stop me? You, you think, really? You know, there ought to be someone tonight that's been trapped in their giving that gives the biggest offering they've ever gave. There ought to be someone tonight that's been trapped in their worship that gives the biggest shout of praise that they've ever given. Someone that says, I've never honored. Someone that would lift up a shout of praise to honor their God. I, I'm believing that a generation's church would rip out of the caution tape and say, devil! They've been looking for Jesus. They, they found him in they found him in toast. Look at this. <laughs> They've been looking for Jesus. They found him in a pan. It's pretty good. My question is, when will they find him in the hearts of man? When will they find him in us? When will they find him in normal, average, regular people? When, when will they see Jesus? When we step out of where we've been hiding. Come on, we need some Christians to come out of the closet of Christianity and say, God, I am the church of power. As the piano comes, you can stay standing. 
this picture of this young man, his name's Nelson. He was from my youth ministry. And we were in a pre-service prayer. And when I was praying at our pre-service prayer, I, I wouldn't practice what I would pray. I'd just pray. And I prophesied this thing out on accident, I thought. I said, tonight somebody's going to raise the dead. And it was kind of like that. the band was loud. I thought, okay, they didn't hear me. Just keep going. That was kind of weird. <laughs> but this young man heard me. He went home to his family that night. His mom and dad were in the living room crying. He said, mom and dad, what's going on? He said, your grandma is in ICU in Ohio. We're going to fly out in the morning, but they don't expect her to make it through the night. He said, I went in my room and I was sad. And he said, Pastor, I was saddest because my grandma didn't know Jesus. He said, I found Jesus. My, my mom and dad, they still don't know God. I got saved at the stadium. And he said, as he turned off his lights, he laid down in his bed. And when he hit his head hit the pillow, he heard my voice. He said, Pastor, I heard you. It was like you were in my room. I heard as soon as I closed my eyes, somebody tonight's going to raise the dead. <laughs> he said, I got up. He said, seriously, I, I thought you were in my room. I looked in my room. I was tripping out. I heard your voice. It was, it was a literal voice. He said, there was no one there. So I thought, man, I'm going crazy. He turned off the lights. He said, I put my head down on my pillow and I heard your voice again. Somebody tonight's going to raise the dead. He said, I turn on the lights again, no one's there. He said, I ra laid down for a third time. I heard it again. I heard it louder and louder and louder. And he said, fine, God. He said, I turned on the lights. He said, I put on some worship music. And then I started marching around my room, crying out to God. God, whatever you're about to do, Lord, you need to do it, God, tonight. My grandma has died. She's in the hospital. But Lord, I know that you can heal her. You can raise her from the dead. He started praying this. He's only saved two months. That's a wild Christian. He said, God, I want you to save her. I want to tell her about you. Raise her from the dead so I can tell her about you. He said he prayed till he fell asleep. In the morning, his parents opened the door and he was sleeping on the ground in the middle of his room. They shook him and woke him up. And when they woke him up, they had smiles on their face. And they said, son, someone's on the phone to talk to you. He said, we don't know who you were talking to last night, but whoever it was, they heard you. Grandma is alive and not dead. And she wants to talk to you because she heard you were praying for her. He said, Pastor, I grabbed the phone. I led my grandma to the Lord. She raised up from that hospital bed. I have the power. I have the power. I have the power. Come on, it's time to step out into signs and wonders, miracles. Can I tell you this? Even the Ouija board knows that God has power over it. I want to read you this on the back of the Ouija board. It says this, never ask the Ouija board about God. It says this on the back of the package. Should it be of an evil spirit, which money of the Ouija board spirits are believed to be evil, then it will become incredibly angry. The demonic or evil being is said to be aware that it has no power over God. And it's not happy about it. It is said that the mere mention of God or Jesus will result in glass smashing and things shaking and flying around and other crazy, and it says a cuss word. The Ouija board knows that Jesus is the king. My question is, do we know? In Revelations, the Bible says that the devil has been booted out of heaven. The dragon, he fell down. He was not welcome here. 
then it says he's gone down to the earth it says they were overcome by the blood of the lamb and the word of their testimony so rejoice you heavens but then the bible says but woe to the earth for the devil has gone down to you and he's angry he's not happy about it and then it says this because he knows his time is short I asked God, I said, why is he angry and why, how does he know that his time is short? You didn't even tell the son when the time was coming. And he said, I, I didn't tell him his time is short. You told him his time is short. I said, what do you mean? He said, he's never seen a church like this one. He's never seen a group that's not afraid to worship in their wounds, not afraid to bless God with their pain. He's never seen youth rush to the altar and put their lives on the altar. He's never seen adults give it all and say, God, I'm going for broke on this thing. So what he sees is a church like the first one. And he realizes his time is short. Come on, I know we have a group of people in this room about to let the devil know that his time is short in Phoenix. His time is short in your family. His time is short in your workplace. I know they're worshiping in heaven, but can we praise right here? Can we worship with the wounds? Can we praise through the problems? Can we step out to the danger zone? Come on, if you're ready to witness, if you're ready to trust, if you're ready to worship, if you're ready to see a metamorphosis in your life, just lift up your hands. Lift up your hands, Holy Spirit. I pray you would blow through this place like a mighty rushing wind. We want to be filled up again. Come on, say, Holy Spirit, baptize me. Fill me to overflow. I want the fullness of your power. I'm ready to move. Shift heaven, God. Shift earth, God. Fill me up, God. Come on now, grab your neighbor's hand and lift it up to the sky. God's going to begin to baptize this place in fire. Are you ready? Fire! 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 In vain! In vain! In vain us, God! In vain us, God! In vain us, God! Revival! Revival! Fire! 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 Raya Baba Kia Dara Raba Bakandaria Hiriya Baba Kia Dara Raba Bak Hiriya Baba Kia Dara Baba Raba Bak Raya Baba Kia Dara Fire! Holy Spirit, mighty warrior, mighty warrior, rise up, rise up, rise up! Now, now, every chain, every barrier. I just feel like God's been chopping. He's been chopping out of the apathy. Tonight was a fruition of years of what God's been telling you fire holy spirit now god in a new way fire now 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 now
Rocky under there, Papa. Come on, if you have a prayer language, come on, stir it up. Come on, stir up the gift inside of you. Come on, let the devil hear the language that sends chaos into his camp. The promise is for you and all who are far off. If you have not been baptized in the Spirit, just lift up your hands. God wants to baptize you now in fire. Holy Spirit, we pray right now. You will release your fire. If you see someone with their hands lifted, I want you to put your hands on them. Come on, we're going to believe for the baptism of fire to spread through this room. A metamorphosis is taking place. God is waking you up. Fire, Holy Spirit. Mighty warrior. There you go. Come on. Come on, man. Just begin to speak out. God's going to grab a hold of your tongue. Begin to move. The wind of heaven is blowing through this place. It's environments like this that radical healings begin to take place. If you need a healing in your body, lift your hand. Come on, let's surround all those lifting their hands. Come on, let's begin to pray. Come on, revivalists. Come on, church of power. When you walk up, ask them what's wrong. What can I pray for? Put your hand on that part of their body if it's appropriate. Begin to ask Jesus to knit back that part of their body, how he determined them to be. Father, we pray right now for cancer to leave. We pray for diseases to leave. We pray for back injuries to leave. Asthma to leave. Mental illness to leave. Now in the name of Jesus. Lord, I pray for anxiety to be broken off in Jesus' name. Jesus, Jesus, we enthrone you in our praises, God. It's a dangerous church. We got a dangerous church in this building. We got a dangerous church in this house. Now I want you to have them tested. Many times we we pray for people to be healed, but then we never test it. The Bible says, ask, seek, and knock. Ask, seek, and knock. Come on. So we're going to do those things. Come on, have them tested. If they couldn't bend over, have them try to bend over. If they couldn't dance, have them try to dance. If they couldn't walk, have them try to walk. It might be even painful at first, but I believe God's going to heal them in the process. Come on, if somebody feels healing rushing through their body, I want you to begin to wave. Wave at us. Come on, begin to wave at us. You feel healing. As we were praying, you felt healing come through your body. Come on, people are being healed right here. I see you, ma'am. I see you, ma'am. Heaven sees you back here. Back over here. I see you. I see you worshiping God over here. Come on, can we celebrate as God begins to heal people in this room? Yeah. Yeah, praise God. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. If your giving has been tied up, you've been controlling your giving, I want you to raise your hand. You've been controlling your giving. God says give more and you've held back. You've withheld. Maybe it's not just in your finances. Maybe it's your time, your talent, or your treasure. Come on. If that's you, there are more than just one. Come on. Anybody else? You've been trying to control your giving so you won't get hurt. God wants to release a supernatural revival in your life, in your giving. Come on. Right now, lift your hand. Holy Spirit, I pray tonight you would break the spirit of poverty over their life. We don't have to protect or reserve our time, our talent, our treasure. God, we break out of the comfort zone and we ask Holy Spirit you would do a supernatural work in our giving in Jesus name come on you're in this room and you've had a hard time honoring maybe it's because you don't feel honored you've had a hard time honoring people in your life 
Maybe honoring your father and your mother because you're waiting for them to be a certain thing. Maybe honoring your leaders because you've been hurt by leaders. Come on, lift your hands. We're breaking out of that area. We're breaking out of that. We're going to honor where God, God wants us to release honor in this room. Maybe you're older and you have a hard time honoring the younger generation. Lift your hands. Holy Spirit, we pray, God, you would break out in a revival in our honor, God. Lord, that we would honor up, down, around. Holy Spirit, we would spread it. Father, say, say, Jesus, today I forgive those that have hurt me. I release them. And God, I step out into the danger zone. Tonight is a new night. God, show me how to honor. Teach me how to honor. Maybe you're in this room and serving is hard for you. Come on, lift your hands. Serving is hard. You say, man, I only got so much time. It's hard for me to be involved. It's hard for me to serve. I'm burned out. Anybody feel burned out? Come on, lift your hands. You feel burned out. God wants us to release a new re revival in your life for serving. Holy Spirit, I pray right now. Lord, we ask that you would release something. We step out of the caution tape, Lord, of control, and we step into the danger zone. We step out with faith and know, God, you will redeem the hours. You will redeem the time. We're not getting any more time. But, Lord, would you take our time, our talent, our treasures, and we lay them at your throne, God. We serve like you served. In Jesus' name. Maybe you're in this room and you've had a hard time being obedient to God. God's asked you to do some things and you haven't been obedient. Lift your hand. Someone's jumping over here saying, man, God's asking me to do a lot of things. And tonight I'm breaking that off. I'm stepping out. That was what I was stepping out for. God, we ask right now, say, Jesus, I come to your throne. You are the king. I submit my life to your authority in Jesus name amen come on you're in this room and witnessing has been hard but maybe you've been doing good with it but you want to step out to a new level you say God I want to step out to a new level I want people in my life to start getting saved all over the place God I want to burn for you I want to be a witness for you come on lift your hands say Jesus I want that gift I want to be a powerful witness. Speak to me. Give me dreams and visions of the people in my life. God, when I'm pressed, let you come out. Let my witness be that I follow you. God, I pray against fear, intimidation. I break it now in the name of Jesus. Amen. Maybe yours is faith and trust. Trust in God. Trust in God with where you're at. Come on, if that's it, you say, man, I'm stepping out for a new level of faith, a new level of trust. Say, Jesus, open my faith. New levels. New levels. I know there's new devils. But inside of that, I trust you. I lean upon you. Give me everything, God. Everything you have for me. When I come to the borders of my doubt, I break down the walls and I ask for new levels of trust to open up in Jesus' name. And the last one, I save this for the end. Praise and worship. You know what I'm praying? Is the next time I come to this church, we don't even use the chairs. I mean, if you have to, if you're incapacitated, we need to lay you out, whatever it is. But, but in the upper room, they didn't have seats. Because they didn't need them. You know what my prayer is? Is that we start at the end every week. That we start church like this. What if that happened in this place? What if we took our worship to another level? You said, I don't have to come down here. No, you don't. But this is our altar in this church. And my Bible says that we're not coming to the altar to die. We're coming in to be living sacrifices on the altar. Don't let the devil keep you in your seat. Don't let him lock you up in caution. Don't let him tell you the altar is for the youth. I dare some old people that push the young people out of the way and say, I may be old in body, but I'm young in spirit. You go ahead and dance, but I'm going to praise my God on this altar. Come on, let's... This one, we don't got to pray for. We got we to gotta step into. 
we're going to sing a song of praise. We're going to sing a song of passion. You know what revival means? To bring something back to life. Tonight, I believe we put the, the defibrillators on the church. And you sat up out of that hospital bed. And the best thing to do out of that is to praise your God. You know what? There are some rowdy men. Can I get a room for the men down here? Can the men down come down close? I really feel like God's going to break out to a new level tonight in worship in the men. Women are easy to show their emotions. Men reserve their emotions. But men, let me tell you this. I don't want you to give God an emotional praise. That's not good enough. We don't praise based on how we feel. We, we, we give him a willful praise. I will praise. David was a warrior. He said, God, I will praise the God. He, he looked at the sun and the moon, and he said, sun and moon, you better get ready, because I'm about to wake you up with my praise. I believe we're going to have some rowdy men in this house. Can we get some warrior praise tonight? Can we get some...
amazing word tonight. It's I just I just it's God's wanting to lift everything. He's wanting to lift everything. Our third year is going to be a year of lifting everything. It's just like, and I hate to use these words because they're, they're so cliche, but I can't think of anything else to say tonight. But it's just like everything lifting to the third level of revival. Everything lifting. Everything. Everybody say everything. what we do here on revival weekends and, and, and then this weekend for invade conference what we do on these weekends are about preparing us for the next three weeks before the next revival weekend it's about us being lifted so that we could go the church wherever we go and release power release healing release hope release joy whatever's needed wherever we are i think the holy spirit to make sure we have what we need to release in that moment wherever we are because you don't go anywhere by accident so as we leave here tonight we leave here to go make a difference all over the city then we come back Wednesday night and we and we break the heavens open a little more and we send the Spirit of God out before us plowing the field and getting the harvest ready for seeds to be sown and fruit to be reaped oh my God just lift your hands father I just want to seal everything that has been deposited in us this weekend even though some things we've already forgotten they're in us and I speak to that seed that has been sown in us and I pray over the next few weeks that it will begin to bring forth fruit I thank you for it now father that we have entered our third year and we shall see a third year blessing a third year manifestation in our personal lives in this corporate house and in our families I thank you for it father everything that has been done we give you glory and we give you praise and we thank you for a lifting of everything I have not seen ear hath not heard nor has it entered to the hearts of men I tell you we haven't seen what God has done yet uh, but it's coming it's coming into the manifestation in the supernatural we're gonna see it in Jesus name do you receive that come on give the Lord praise Anybody that is going back to school, if you're college or junior high, high school, young adults, if you're going back to school, I'm just going to pray over you. So why don't you guys go ahead and lift your hands. I was, I was telling Pastor Jeremy, he was actually talking about Brian Barcelona uh, with me earlier. And I, I really feel, he, the guy that does all the campus uh, ministry and all that stuff, I really feel the next level of, the, of revival for Invade is to see this breaking out in campuses all over our city. See, students, students can deny when we say, hey, God loves you, but they can't deny when they're jumping out of wheelchairs and walking. They can't deny that. 
that's the next level invade raise your hands god i just pray over each and every single student junior high young adult high school student college age wherever they're going god i just pray wherever they go wherever they step their feet as they strike the ground on their campuses tomorrow god you are going to do something this year that you have never done before god we are going to see revival breaking out all over in junior high campuses and high school campuses let it begin not not at the be- not at the middle of uh, of the school year not at the end of the school year god let it begin tomorrow god let it begin god we just break off the spirit of timidity god they are not timid they are not scared they are walking on with the roar with the boldness of a lion god they are not walking in fear they are not fearful they are fearless walking on campuses god stepping on campuses spreading revival god let it be so this year come on students just say let it be so this year god i just pray you are going to sweep all over campuses from the north the south the east the west god let it be so let revival spread all over campuses all over this city come on if 